Uh, yeah, here in the book of Hebrews, we're going to pull something out of the hat, if you will, that is kind of unusual, like you just said, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. And uh, because so much of Scripture, we say this a lot, that the, the, the life of Christ can be found from cover to cover in, in Scripture. That almost every single book of the Bible, some way or another, sometimes you have to devotionally, applicationally apply it. You know, the application applied is a double it's a double word. It's redundant. Uh, but you have to take this and kind of evangelistically illustrate it and applying it in such a way as kind of like, this is what this could mean, or this is how this fits. Um, but there is a, an image of Christ in every single book of the Bible. And here in the book of Hebrews is no less of, of, of such a fact. So Hebrews, I said chapter 12, didn't I? I I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I've been re, I, I studied for ch Hebrews chapter 2, but I'm over in 12 in my personal study. So go back a few chapters um, to Hebrews chapter 2. Excuse me. Hebrews chapter 2. I know that's, y'all are like, man, man, that's, you got me turning more than I normally do. Well, it's, I'm sorry about that, not. Um, but we're going to read just a few verses of scripture here, 18 as a matter of fact. So we're going to read the whole, whole uh, chapter here. Hebrews chapter 2, begin reading in verse number 1. This is what the scripture says. It says, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. That is good, good advice. That's, you know, that's when you, I don't know how long you've been in church, to how, if you've been raised in church any length of time, or you're just getting into it, just getting started and studying, whatever. Uh, but the thing is, regardless of how much time we've been involved in it, there's words of encouragement, words of advice that's being given to us through our daily devotion reading or you know, our scripture reading, uh, through, you know, preachers, you know, that we pick up here, there, and yonder, or even in person, or our, our teachers and stuff like that, that there are things that we've been told that that we've heard, and we need to take them as a gold nugget, and we need to value that and cherish it. Why? Because there could be times where we need it. Wow, that's just deep, isn't it? You know, here's some good advice. Well, I'm just not going to heed it because I don't need it today. Well, what if you need it tomorrow? Right? What if you need it next week? Or maybe it's not even for you. Have you ever had that happen to you that something came, you know, a word came into your life and you're like, wow, that's interesting. And then you use it, use it for somebody else like a week later or something like that. You know, I heard recently, and this might be applying to you in your life. And it's like, wow, you know, uh, sometimes it's not for us. But we need to take earnest heed to them. Verse number two, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first being spoken by the Lord and was confirmed un unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles, the gifts and the gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. So how can we, how can we escape if we neglect this? Uh, there's a whole other message just on verse number three about so great a salvation. And I, I love that, so great a salvation. Verse number five, For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? This would be the psalmist. He said these in, in uh, Psalms chapter 8. Thou madest him, verse number 7, thou madest him a little lower than the angels, and crownest him with glory and honor, and did set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now... We, not, we see not yet all things put under him. Let me kind of break it down into, into 2018 uh, comprehension, in, if you will, that God has given Christ, the man, power. Even Jesus himself said, the Father has given me all power in heaven and earth, that everything is you know, in subjection to me. We're going to break this down even to a man-sized nugget here in just a minute in such a way that we can grasp a hold of and we can and we can have a deeper appreciation for Jesus the man verse number nine but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels kind of explained a little bit here now for the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man I'm going to read that again and then I'm going to 
break it down a little bit in such a way that I want you to grasp a hold of something here. Verse number nine, but we see Jesus who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Now I'm gonna go back to that last phrase, all right? And I want y'all to help me out with one word in there. That he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Maybe yours says all, or for all mankind, or for something like that. But explain to me how we can get to a point in theological doctrinal statements that says that it's for a select few. Basic common English right here. I mean, we could go and we can look at several other verses that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Well, that's whosoever, that's all-inclusive. That is not exclusive, right? For God so loved the world that whosoever, again, you know, it's kind of like we can't break it down into a select group of people when God himself says whosoever or all or every man. So who did Jesus die for? Every man. Come on now. (laughs) There's, There's always one in the group but for every man. Verse number 10, for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things. Now let me give you, I'm gonna jump over real quick. I'm gonna squirrel out to John chapter one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. All right, that's what he's saying here in this passage of scripture as well, is that, hey, Jesus is the same one that was the capital W word that was in the beginning, that God, the triune body, spoke things into existence. He was, he was the Bob Ross of creation, right? He was the one who said, there it is. And you're just like, oh, you're like, how did he do that? He's, I don't know, but God, God, he just did it. You know, he spoke it, there it was. And so that's what he's saying here is that this same Jesus that we're talking about that, was, that died for everybody. See, I'm starting to get cranked up. Chill down. All right. That God cranked up. You know, God, God got cranked up. That for by him, verse number 10, for it became him for whom are all things. That, in other words, he created all things. And by whom are all things. There again, he was not only a designer, but the designer hand. In bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of our salvation perfect through sufferings for it became him it became good for him it became good for us Uh, you've ever heard that phrase you we don't say it as much as anyone as much as they used to but you know people would say well that dress becomes her right you you remember that phrase back in the day you know well you know now we'd say man that that truck becomes him no we don't say that at all you know (laughs) we'd say it like that truck fits him that, that, that position fits them. They look, that, it was made for them. Now we're getting to understand what he's saying here in verse number 10, that it became, it, it fits him for him to do this. There's nobody else that could fill that role. For both he, that's verse number one, for both he that sanctifieth and they which are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren saying, verse number 12, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praises unto thee. Boy, that's what we should do, right? Be like him. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, oh, this is gonna be good here, that through death he might destroy him that hath the power of death, that is, and I love how he goes in to explain exactly who he's talking about here. He goes, that is the devil. Can I, jumping ahead of myself, just a hair, all right? Can I tell you what the purpose of Christ was? Not only just the redemption of the souls, not only the payment of sin, not only the payment, the sacrifice of Christ, but he also came to conquer not only death, but also the one who controlled death, the, the giver, if you will, right here, that he came, that he did destroy him, that had the power of death, that is the devil. 
Now, mind you, according to the, the, the scripture, according to the history of scripture, we're looking at for 4,000 years, give or take, for 4,000 years, at one time, the, the, the serpent, the devil was in the serpent, and he, came and he tempted Eve, and he said, that, you're not going to, surely, God's not going to kill you. Surely, you won't die. Really, did God say that? And the woman did take of the fruit, and she did eat, and she gave it to her husband that was with her, and he did eat. And sin, we hit this just last week, and because of one man's sin, Romans chapter, you know, chapter 5, because of one man's sin, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men. For 4,000 years, there was nothing that could be done about it except for the remission of sins, the, the small payment, the hiding of the sins, and putting it under subjection to, you know, being obedient and to, to God Jehovah. But it couldn't get them into the abode of God. We hit this Sunday when we were talking about Lazarus and the rich man, that for 4,000 years, they went to Abraham's bosom. They went to paradise. And that in itself was great compared to what was on the other side of the ravine, of the other side of the gulf that was fixed between them, which was eternal torment. But here, is it really quite heaven if God's not there? No. So there they were waiting for the one. Waiting for the sacrificial lamb to be slain waiting for Jesus to fulfill a purpose in his life, the death, burial, and resurrection. And that is what? To destroy the one that had the power of death. The devil thought he had. The devil's like, man, 4,000 years. Look at this. I am ruling this world. I'm doing all kinds of things. Sure, I still have to appear before God occasionally and give report. But hey, I got a full rule and reign here. I can make people do whatever I want. And then Jesus shows up, right? You see, the scripture isn't like we have the scripture today. They only had, you know, the Old Testament. They don't have, you know, the full, full story that we have that we can look back and see, how did the devil not know what was about to happen? What in the world's going on? You know, and he thought he had him, not only for 4,000 years, but may I say it like this, 4,000 years and three days, right? He's like, man, I got this. But then Jesus shows up and Jesus dies so that he can destroy him that hath the power of death, that is, the devil. And it wasn't only that that he did, but look what he continues on. In verse number 15, we see another purpose of the cross. We see another purpose of the life and death of Jesus. And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. There's a lot of people that even we know today that fear death not because of death itself, but because of an unknown. Well, what if? What's, what, what is on the other side? Is there anything on the other side? Is there another side whatsoever? I don't know. But we that are saved and born again and trust Jesus Christ, we do so on the basis of faith in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we take you know what the Word says on faith and saying, yes, there is. I haven't crossed over there. I don't know, but there is one that has, and he came back and testified of it. There was one that was there even before there was a thereafter. He was before time. I know, don't, don't overthink that because it'll blow your mind, all right? But he came to deliver those of us with fear. Verse number 16, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Let me even break it down even further because some people say, oh, you know, it's just for the, the Jewish people. No, no. He came to be God with us, Emmanuel. He came to be a man. Subject unto likes and dislikes as we, as such as we have. Even temptations, even as we have. But he didn't succumb to them. He didn't, he didn't pursue them. He was tempted even as we are tempted, yet without sin. How does one do that? He did it. I can't, you can't, but he did. He came in the form of a servant. Verse number 17, wherefore in all things it behooved him. Behooved, as in, you know, it was good, again, it was good for him and that he wanted to do this. Uh, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, like us, 
that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Let me kind of give you a little life illustration and then we'll get back into verse number 18. And that is that, have you ever worked with somebody that had no clue what they were doing and they were your boss? You ever, if you work with somebody that's your boss and you're in this room, disregard the question, we'll go on to something else, all right? But have you ever done that? I've actually worked with some people before, and at one time I was with a, a, another retail giant and was and worked several years, knew how to do everything in the store. I would, had worked in every single department in the store, you know, except for lingerie. No, I'm th- no, thank you. You know, worked everywhere else, and it's kind of like, I, okay, I'm ready for the next step. I'm ready to step into a manager role and, and, you know, and, and do this. And at that time, they were real high on hiring straight in out of college. I went to my district manager, and I'm like, you know, hey, I'm ready to take that next step. Well, Ken, I'm sorry, but right now what, what they're doing is they're focusing on bringing people in that have degrees and stuff like this. And I'm like, but they don't know diddly. As I said, I, I, they come in here, and they ask me what to do. And it's kind of like, I don't get that. Now, as, as I am in a manager role in one of the retail giants, you know, it's kind of like when I have people that work under me, it's kind of like, I know where you come from. And I work alongside of them. And I don't just tell them what to do. Is I go and I work alongside of them. I'm a fellow laborer with them. And they appreciate that. And it's kind of, they look at it and they're like, you know, you know exactly what we're going through. Exactly. I, I, yes. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm trying to get across. Isn't it? wonderful to know that we don't serve a God that has only lived up on top of a mountain with his legs crossed and singing kumbaya, right? But we serve a risen Savior that knows exactly what we're going through. That he knows exactly your hurt. He's been, he's been stabbed in the back by his best friends. He was sold out, literally sold out by someone that was near and dear to him. He had loss of loved ones. He had struggles growing up. He was, he was sought out to be killed on multiple occasions, even as a baby. So we can see that his life was not perfect, even though he was. And he can relate to exactly what we're going through. Through our good times, our bad times, our jubilation times, our difficult times, you know, our school times, our our family times, our lifetimes. He he understands all that. And that's a rejoicing thing to know. Why? Because he's been there, done that. He knows exactly what we're going through. And that's what he's saying here. That he was exactly as we were. Why? So that he could, I love how he's, they, they say it here. So that he can be merciful and faithful. You ever had people like that? There's a lot of times like when I'm, when, when I'm dealing with people that at work, there's, I don't overlook things. I just correct them differently than some people. There's some people that they're just like, fire them, get rid of them. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, this is a teaching moment. I could, I could take them and I can show them the proper way of doing things, and next time they won't make that mistake. Now, if they just blatantly disregard, okay, we, we'll talk about that. But I want to be merciful to people. I am so thankful that Nanette is merciful to me. She made a comment a while ago. She goes, I get, you know, that I, I tell her what to do even at home. And I'm like, no, no. I learned a long time ago not to do that, all right? There are some things that I strongly advise that we should do, but I don't just say, you need to do that. No, no, no. I know better. Why? Because I don't want her to be merciful as well. I want to be merciful to her. Do, do we make mistakes? I do. <laughs> and just in case she watches this later, I do. Yeah, she does too. You know what? So do all of us. We make mistakes. We don't pay attention to some things. We, we, we fail at some things. I know that's not the Barney thing that we all want to hear, that you're special and you do everything right. Guess what? No, you don't. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. <laughs> that verse just does away with all the PBS specials, doesn't it? But you're special. Yes, you are in such a way that God loved you. 
But yeah, you got faults and failures. We all do. And he lived the life of a man so that he could understand that. More so that we would understand that he understands. He already knew. He knows all things. But so that we can know him better, he became us. Verse number 18. For in, his, in that he himself has suffered being tempted and is able to secure them that are tempted. I just said the verse a while ago that, you know, it says that, you know, that he is tempted even as we are tempted yet without sin. He knows what we're going through. So as we come across this time that, that we're about to celebrate the life and death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we want to say, well, you know, I serve a risen Savior, let's just not put that up on a shelf somewhere and just put spotlights on it and say, oh, that's him, all right? But rather, he's right here beside us. Okay, should be in front of us, leading us, we got that, right? But he's also right here as, as, as a help, an ever-present help. He's even behind us a little bit. You know, as you said, surrounding us. He's even behind us, just giving us a little nudge along the way. Let me, you know, it's kind of like if, if you're walking a long distance and somebody, especially if you're going up a hill, you know, it's different if somebody pulls you up the hill. It's still a struggle. But if somebody gives you just enough a little, little push behind, it's kind of like, okay, I'm still doing this on my own effort and you're not pulling my arm out of socket. I'm still advancing forward. And it's, it's still not comfortable, but it's easier. Life is not comfortable, is it? But with God's help, it can be a little easier. Matter of fact, regardless of what comes your way, I will tell you this, to, te to testify to what was said a while ago, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Does that mean I can do bad and Christ strengthens me to do it? No but I can do those things which do strengthen me through the power of Christ. Right? Where are we at in our life? Where are we at in that, you know, how do we look at Christ? Do we look at him as just high and lifted up? Yes, we should. But also do we look at him as unattainable, intangible? Someone asked me this question a few weeks ago, and they're, and they're like, Brother Ken, do you think that a pastor should be uh, reachable? tangible that you know that uh, that if you wanted to meet with them that you could or if you wanted to text them you could if you wanted to call them you could uh, or whatever the case may be and the answer is yes and I even at one point when I was ministering in another state it's kind of I even had the question because man I was hunting buddies with people I was fishing buddies with people I was you know we did things rode motorcycles together all that stuff. I mean, you know, I'd go and we'd eat ice cream and Twinkie ice cream. And oh my goodness, I got so big. <laughs> you know, but the thing is that we did all this stuff together. And I even got to the point, I even asked another pastor because again, I believe a pastor should have a pastor. And I asked a pastor, I said, I said, I said, Brother Rick, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, is it possible for a pastor to get too close to his congregation? And he goes, well, he goes, there is a, there is a point he says, but he said, but I believe this. He said, I believe they should be close because I believe that the flock should get the scent of the shepherd. They should know the scent of the shepherd. And I was like, because if you let them just go out there and wander astray, you know, and you're not, you can't be there to help them when the times get tough. Why? Because they don't know you. You can't be there and really be a part of the celebration of life because they don't know you. Alan and Lori, you know, to bring, not to bring up heavy burdens, if you will, but to be there and cry with you and to rejoice with you, um, chill bumps, you know, and, and to be there and become a brother, you know, of the family. I believe that's my role is to be there and be a part of, of your families. You know, to rejoice with you when you rejoice, to be sorrowful when you, you know, are sorrowful, you know, and just, and even nonchalant when we're nonchalant and life just is going, right? But to be a part of every, every part of that, 
get, let me tell you that as special as that is to have a pastor that does that or to have a congregation that does that, that'll sit across the table and stuff their face with pizza with me, that's awesome. I love it, all right? But more so importantly and more so special is that we have a Savior that is alive and has a passion to be ever so close with us and intimate with us and to sit across the table and sup with us. He said in, you know, in the book of Revelation, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. He wants to have dinner with us. That's personal. That's special. That's break out the fine china kind of stuff. That's our God. So when we go through life and it's kind of like, oh, does anybody care? Yes. Does anybody want to listen? Yes. Who? Who would want to care about me? Who wants to hear the burdens I bear? Were you not listening when I was reading the scriptures? It's Jesus. He cares for our souls. What a wonderful God we serve. Amen. Father God, we give you so much thanks for your eternal scriptures. God, we thank you for uh, your son, your love for us in such a way that your son came to earth to be just like us to live a life that was human. And God, in, in that, he got to know us, and through that, we can know him. God, we thank you for that intimate, personal relationship that we can have with Jesus. God, we ask you to help us over the next few days to take advantage of the opportunity to tell people why we celebrate Resurrection Day, to tell people about who resurrected and God, his purpose for the cross. God, we ask you to keep us safe as we go our separate ways in just a few moments. In Christ's name we do pray, amen.